SNP spokesperson Alison Thoulis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Chancellor comes here today, the sixth Chancellor in seven years, asking us to believe that the things that he voted for and supported just a few months ago were all fine at the time, but need completely reversed now. A new era, but they've been in government for 12 years. He stretches credibility beyond breaking point, saying that tax cuts for the rich, whopping bonuses for the bankers, and low corporation tax for companies will somehow refloat magically Britain's sinking economy. He has no evidence, and this is no plan for growth. It is budget measures with no OBR assessment ducking scrutiny time and time again. It is a plan, Mr Speaker, for recession, for debt on an unsustainable trajectory and almost inevitable public sector cuts to come. Actively choosing to permanently cut taxes and spend eye-watering sums to patch up a failed energy market while inflation soars, interest rates are hiked and recession looms will not create growth. It will create economic chaos. Nothing he has said today will provide any reassurance and give hope to ordinary people, folks struggling to get by in broke, broken Britain. Families unable to put food on the table and heat their homes, punished by the Tory benefit cap and the two-child limit. These policies are driving up child poverty, and the Chancellor should be scrapping them, not the bankers' bonus cap. Indebted households already struggling to pay their mortgages in debt. A stamp duty cut is not going to help. It's going to overheat that housing market even more. Mr Speaker, disabled people and carers are terrified the electricity will run out. Pensioners are scared to turn on the heating. <coughs> the energy price cap should not go up. It's already too high, and people must get more help now. Asylum seekers and people stuck on no recourse to public funds are forced to get by on a pittance, and there was nothing whatsoever for them from this Chancellor. Mr Speaker, community organisations like Glasgow Central Mosque face additional energy bills of hundreds of thousands of pounds, which is a charity they just cannot afford. People depend on community organisations like the mosque, and they are being asked to be on the front line this winter. Even with the six-month reprieve in energy prices, these bills will not go away. Would the Chancellor have the mosque close their elderly daycare service, or the counselling provision, the mother and toddler group, the poverty reduction work, or the vaccination centre that has been running in the community hall? These are very real choices communities are already having to make. The businesses I have been listening to over the past months are incredibly worried for the future. They were already facing severe pressure through supply chain costs, input costs, labour costs, <laughs> COVID debts and Brexit woes before energy prices soared. Now they don't know how they will survive. Six months will go by in a flash and the question remains, what then? What then from the Chancellor? Companies can't wash away, wish away these bills. The eye-wateringly eye unaffordable contracts they are being forced to sign right now. What happens to those businesses who just miss the arbitrary cut-off? And what of the increase in standing charges, which we already know are disproportionately high in Scotland? Mr Speaker, Scotland is an energy-rich country, but we don't have the power. Scotland's renewable sector is booming, but in off-gas grid rural Scotland, surrounded by the wind turbines generating clean green energy, people are having to spend an absolute fortune in heating oil. In Argyll and Butte, in Angus, the Highlands and Islands and across our rural communities, households face increases of over 230% in the past two years alone. The UK Government's offer of £100 is nothing short of an insult as people turn to credit cards to fill up their fuel tanks. The Scottish Government is doing all in its power to support people through this crisis, strengthening the safety net by increasing the Scottish Child Payment to £25 a week, doubling the Fuel Insecurity Fund to £20 million and freezing rents, because renters are also facing pressures. We have the highest rate of the real living wage in Scotland. We have invested in tackling fuel poverty and energy efficiency. But we could do so much more with more budget and more powers. At the back of the Blue Book today, still no carbon capture and storage for the north east of Scotland, a game changer for renewables in Scotland. Where is that in the Chancellor's plans? Nowhere again. We could have growth by investing in skills, in net zero and productivity. The Chancellor's plans will not do this. Mr. Speaker, people don't freeze to death in our Nordic neighbours. And people there are not living in one of the most unequal countries in the world, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. only getting worse. Yeah. This right-wing, Thatcher-cosplaying shambles of a government yeah, is making choices yeah, yeah, yeah. that they will never fear the consequences of. Mr Speaker, I beg of this Chancellor 
to listen to those on the edge, those who are desperately looking right now to him for a lifeline, but no one should have to beg for a decent standard of living. The people of Scotland see a Scottish Government doing their best to mitigate the worst, but stymied by the broken politics of this union and this economic madness we heard from the Chancellor today. Scotland is looking for a different path, Mr Speaker. Scotland needs independence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what Scotland doesn't need is reheated socialism from the yeah. SNP. Yeah. Uh, she mentioned energy, and I was just, I'm always staggered when uh, people on, in her party mention energy, yeah. and they don't countenance nuclear power. Nuclear power is a great, clean form of energy. And, it's, and while we speak about energy, she will know that we have indeed listened. We have uh, implemented a, a limit uh, to energy prices. My uh, right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, who is no longer in her place, made uh, the, in the engagement within two days of uh, taking office, and it is something which I am very proud of, and we have also extended it to supporting businesses.